do, I think we should get started. Okay. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and welcome to this time of prayer and praise. Um, you will notice, of course, on the back are the um, prayer requests. I'm going to add one when we get to prayer time uh, for my brother-in-law, Bruce, who's having some heart trouble. And that means Bruce will have to go into the hospital and sit still. Um, and it's still biking season, so that's going to be hard for him. Also, prayers for Gene shoots when we get there. Okay. Um, please note the announcements. Oh, on the 24th, a potluck, uh, oh, picnic. Okay. Continental breakfast, potluck, uh, emergency fundraiser, uh, auction, breakfast. Oh, pancake breakfast. Okay. Um, and then a community Thanksgiving service. Okay. Um, any um, other prayers or any uh, joys or concerns uh, today? Any other announcements? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'd like to talk to everybody for five minutes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Oh. Our call to worship is responsibly. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May God just rejoice in God's works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles. Who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. Sing praises to my God, my being. Make my meditation be pleasing to God. I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Our first hymn is Tell Me the Old, Old Story, number 16 in the Red Hymnal. Do we stand? And play the music a little bit louder. Jesus and his glory of Jesus and his love. Tell me the story simply as to a little child. For I am weak and weary and helpless and defiled. Tell me the old, old story. Tell me the old, old story. Tell me the old, old story. Of Jesus and his love. Tell me the story slowly that I may make it in that wondrous for redemption, God's remedy. For sin, tell me the story often, for I forget so soon. The early dew of morning has passed away at noon. Tell me the old, old story. Tell me the old, old story. 
Together we'll uh, say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on to Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayer and confession is in unison. O God of majesty and glory, you pour out your spirit on all your children. We hear the words, but we do not live them. Forgive us to attempting to limit your spirit. Fill us again with the blessings of grace. Make us witnesses, we pray, to bring together our spiritual siblings through the power of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. And to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as a body. Now and ever shall be for the dying. Amen. Okay, now time for the children's sermon. Now, quick question. This thing is for that, right? And this thing is for all of you. Okay, I'm not going to bother with this thing, okay? We keep getting too much feedback. Okay, I think you can hear me just fine otherwise. Okay, okay. Um... I had an interesting experience on Friday. A friend of mine um, had to go up to Cleveland to pick up the granddaughter of um, friends of hers from years ago and to bring her home. This girl is a young Christian. She's actually from India. And um, Joy ha had never been to Cleveland before, and I grew up there. And she kept, and I kept trying to explain to her that one of the nice things about Cleveland is it's not set up like Pittsburgh. 
so you can find your way. You know, logic and common sense does work. Okay. And, and, but it was just wonderful to meet this bright young Christian from another country. And she's here on a student exchange for a year through the State Department. And what Joy did was Joy picked her up and took her home to her house for the weekend. Okay. Now, keep this in mind. This is from Psalm 23, verse 6. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So this is two Christians who got together to be at one Christian's house because Joy was going to spend the weekend just getting to know this girl again and being, you know, a mom to her because her mother is on the other side of the world. Okay, so the good news is wherever Jesus is, that can be our home, and that's good news. Okay, let's pray. Gracious Savior, we give thanks that you help us to always have a home. In your name, O Lord, amen. Okay. Let's take a moment in of silent prayer. O oh Lord, help us to lift up our voices in adoration, to celebrate what it means to have you in our lives. Your very presence means that we have life here and life to come. This should fill our hearts with praise and spur us to announce this to the world. We should want others to join us in worshiping you, to be united in the happiness which comes from the redemption only you can provide. It is with contrite heart that we come before you, dear Jesus. Hearts turn to you with prayers of confession. Help us to have the confidence to know that you are ever forgiving of those who seek to walk the right path, to follow the only true way. As we go through our daily lives, please help us, blessed Holy Spirit, to be continually grateful for what we have. The blessedness of our lives has only one ultimate source. Please help us to value that source, to cherish what it means to be provided for in ways we cannot imagine on our own. In this time, we lift up our souls, the healing only you can provide, be it physical, spiritual, psychological. It is only you who can make us whole. Everything else will miss the mark, will be incomplete. In this special hour, we lift up our prayers to you, beseeching comfort for those we know, and for those who do not, we do not know, around the world. We lift up our Facebook friends in need, the Candace Caffas family, Rick and Lynn Sepras, Carl and Marion Green, Norma Benetton, Velma Splitstone, Pat Hill, Ruthie Ridgeway, Diana Johnson family, Pastor David Derby, Cheryl Miller, Hawaii Fire Victorians, Gary Temple family, Cheryl McGranahan, an unspoken prayer request, Helen and Jim, Betsy, Mabel, Diana, and her brother, Jen's little girl, Emma. We lift up Jean. We lift up my brother-in-law, Bruce. We lift them all up to you, Lord. Help us to continually have confidence in all you can provide. We lift up all those who are fighting for freedom across the globe. And we praise all those who find it necessary to seek to defend liberty for our nation. And our Lord bless us. As we pray the prayer you taught your disciples to pray, saying, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now let us sing hymn number 319. God only wise, in light inaccessible, hid from our eyes. Most precious, most glorious, the Ancient of Days, Almighty, victorious, my name we praise. Unresting, unhasting, and silent as night, nor wanting, nor wasting, thou rulest in sight. Right as the sun falls in high certain above, the clouds which are found of greatness and love. To all life thou givest, to both great and small, in all life thou livest, the true life of all. We blossom and flourish as heaven on the tree, and wither and perish, but not change a thee. Great Father of glory, pure Father of light, thine angels adore thee, are willing their sight. All praise we render, Oh, help us to see His only the splendor of light hideth thee. Now it's time for our morning tithes and offerings. <coughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Amen. 
O oh Lord, as we lift up these gifts, help us to remember all the ways in which you blessed us first, the glory of your kingdom on earth. We pray all this, Lord, in your name. Amen. We're singing number four, 412. If you feel like singing along with us, enjoy. <laughs> <clears throat> Under his wings I am safely abiding Though the night deepens and tempests are wild Still I can trust him, I know he will keep me he has redeemed me, and I am his child. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever? Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Under his wings, what a refuge in sorrow. How the heart yearningly turns to his rest. Often when earth has no home or my healing, there I find comfort and there I am blessed. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever. Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Under his wings, oh, what precious enjoyment. There will I hide till life's trials are o'er. Sheltered, protected, evil can harm me. Resting in Jesus, I'm safe evermore. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever? Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Our New Testament lesson this morning is from Genesis chapter 12, beginning at the first verse. Let us hear the word of God. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered and the people whom they had acquired on Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree of Morah, and the Canaanites were there in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord, who appeared to him. 
And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent at Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. Our New Testament lesson is from John chapter 14, beginning at the first verse. Let us hear the word of God. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have a pla- have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, be with us in this time, we do pray in your name. Amen. I want to start off this morning with a question. A question for you. I actually want an answer to this. Not rhetorical. Did this parish at any point have a manse? Have a home for the pastor? Yeah, okay. See, I grew up, because my dad was a preacher, I grew up as the child of the manse. Parsonage, pastorium, whatever. So for my first 19 years, I had a place to live. And most of the fact that I didn't think about it. I didn't think about the fact that the title technically didn't belong to us, it belonged to the church. But there were moments when I had to confront that reality. If something needed to be fixed, we had one of two choices. We either had to wait for Dad to come home because he was the only one in our family who was permitted to do repairs, or we had to get a hold of a trustee to deal with that. And our problem with that was this was a Presbyterian church, of course, and that meant probably dealing with a committee before a trustee could show up and deal with that. Now, there were elders over the years who would seek to make Dad happy with what they were paying him by stating, well, now, John, remember, you get a free house. He would remind them that he got the use of a house, and the IRS made sure it wasn't exactly free. It was in such moments when I actually felt uncomfortable wondering, is this really my home? That's part of the reason why my sister and her husband, my sister Martha and her husband Bruce, I've mentioned, um, he's a pastor. Um, When they got to churches, they would insist on an allowance so they could buy their own home. When I was 17, my father died unexpectedly. I still had high school to finish. And there was a moment when mom and I were faced with the possibility of not being sure where we were going to live. We were blessed the fact that um, mom and Session worked out a deal. At one point, I did a unit of something called clinical pastoral education. That's a kind of chaplain's training. I did mine at a neuropsychiatric veterans hospital. Now, imagine going into a day room filled with long-term institutionalized schizophrenics. Okay, That's an experience, right? Um, the patients, what the patients there wanted the most 
were what were called ward privileges because all the wards were locked. Um, I, would, I was given a great big skeleton key, and I would go unlock the door, open it up, go inside, close it behind me, and lock myself in. Okay, And they wanted ward privileges because there were plenty of places. It was a large facility, large campus, and they wouldn't want to go outside and walk. Um, and if a patient proved he could be trusted, then he could walk all over. And also meant he could go outside and he could smoke. By the way, while I was there, somebody in Washington decided to make it a smoke-free facility. That didn't last. But this was part of helping them to feel that it was all right to be there. The closest to being at home because they were so often too sick and damaged to live on their own. For a lot of these folks, our world did not make sense to them. Now, some were able to have a kind of life for themselves there. The place was safe. It was clean. The food was surprisingly good. Had excellent baking powder biscuits. Now, the staff did, for those who didn't feel terribly overworked, um, the staff did what they could to provide a sense of comfort. Yes, it was an institution, but it was also where those people lived. I asked, once talked to a cook about the high quality of the food, and she replied that she knew who they were, and they still put the love in. That's part of not merely having a place to live, but having a home. Abram had a home. It was with Ur of the Chaldeans. In Genesis 11, we're told about his travels with his father Terah and the rest of the family. They left Ur and spent, stayed for a time in Haran while on their way to Canaan. Chapter 12 begins with a crucial verse. Now the Lord had said to Abram. There we find the explanation for the travels. By the movement of the Spirit, Abram got the message to pack up and leave. It was not his idea. It was part of the plan of God. He did not start off with a plan and say, Hey, okay, Lord, here's the plan I'm putting in place. Please validate this. Please make it okay for me to do this. That's not what was going on. Um, he wasn't asking for approval afterward. The divine came first. Now, the problem is this doesn't always happen. In fact, it frequently doesn't happen that way. I am, because I know this, because recently I encountered this. The people who run Tower Church, and I do some pre in Grove City, and I do some preaching there, um, decided to have a picnic for all those who, you know, on staff and you know, preached occasionally and all that. And rather than meet at the church, they decided to meet at the camp of a longtime member. So I rated an invitation. Now, I'd never been there before. This is up in Venango County. And I checked MapQuest, and I felt confident in what MapQuest told me. Big mistake. See, the camp is north of Franklin, and instead of a nice, easy trip, I ended up taking a tour of Venango County. Um... And happily, I do like back roads, and I saw plenty of them. With a rising sense of aggravation, I finally lifted up a prayer that, okay, Lord, if you want me to get to this picnic, you show me how to do it. And then I was shown 
the right road. Shortly after that, I saw the sign that sent me to the camp. It was a pleasant time once I got there. Abram got the message from the beginning. He was told, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land I will show you. Abram was to leave what was familiar and go to parts unknown. True wisdom here is not knowing why the Lord did this. Abram was being wise merely by following what the Lord had willed him to do. It's that simple. Abram was leaving behind his life, but in doing so, he received a heaven-sent promise. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. You shall be a blessing. The Chaldeans were following into desperate wickedness. So the Lord wanted Abram to have a safer place. That was to be in Canaan. But this was not just about him. This was to include more people than he could imagine. He was to be an advocate for the Lord, a particular God, who was revealing himself to another generation. Humanity was getting another chance. I have spent years working in counseling, um, particularly with addicts. I've dealt with a lot of people who have said, oh, if only I had one more chance. I just want another chance. The problem comes that when that chance comes, and it's not the second chance, it's like the 19th chance, those who have so earnestly pleaded for it then find all kinds of reasons to dodge it. For those who do grasp what it means to have another opportunity for a different kind of life, there can be impressive results. In his wisdom, Abram was seizing on this opportunity. We have just a few verses here to show how a life can be so transformed. We are told, So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, And Lot went with him. He was not going alone. He was also an old man being 75 years old. Perhaps it wasn't too late for a fresh start. That's what he was being given. It was more than just a small group. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they parted to the land of Canaan. That went beyond being their destination. It was their destiny. In his years in ministry, my dad moved six times. Of course, we went with him. He'd been blessed with a mentor, Dr. Alvin Morris. Um, They wrote back and forth for years. Dad trusted Alvin's experience um, because Dad, right out of seminary, had worked for Alvin at a church in Detroit, and they remained close for years. Beyond the financial compensation, Dad wanted a sense of assurance when he moved to another church, moved with a sense of assurance that this is what the Lord wanted for him. He grasped that this was the only way he could be blessed. It was not always easy. There were times when he struggled with various possibilities. However, he sought what was the Lord's will for him. If you continue reading chapter 12, you will notice that once they all got to Canaan, Abram then packed everybody up and left. There was a famine. So he gathered everyone and headed for Egypt. He did not ask the Lord if they should do that. He just went. This shows that his faith was still new. The context of John 14 makes it clear that this was the Lord's Supper for Jesus and his disciples before his arrest. 
Now, the disciples would have shown up with the standard expectation. This was just going to be a regular Passover Seder. That's what they'd grown up with. But then Jesus does something in chapter 13, which was unusual. When the supper was over, he took a towel, poured water in a basin. Then he washed their feet. Peter objects to this, not wanting his feet washed, but Jesus insists. He will go along then, but only if his hands and his head are washed too. Then Jesus talks about being betrayed and how where he is going they cannot follow. Please remember that all this happened before the resurrection. We know the rest of the story. The disciples at that point did not. For about three years, their spiritual dwelling had been with Jesus. They had left their homes to follow him. As much as they experienced great teaching and miracles, they also faced having their expectations changed. Instead of a return to the earthly kingdom the Jews had desired for centuries, Jesus talked about the kingdom of heaven. Now he was talking about leaving and how they can't come along with him right now. So what was going on? It was in this time when Jesus offers them comfort. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In his relationship with the disciples, there had been that long process of building trust. Now it was time of testing that trust if they actually believed him, they would stick with him through all this, which was to come. He knew what was about to happen. They did not. He put everything into God's hands, and he did this for them. What they needed was to continue in their faith and in the blessed will of God. Then comes a promise, a great assurance. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. The literal and, frankly, more accurate translation for mansions is dwelling place. When we hear the term mansion, we have a tendency to think of some huge manor house out in the country. Have you ever seen, did you ever see the show Downton Abbey? We tend to think in those terms. But the point here is a different one. The Hebrews were a nomadic people, and the disciples had wandered around Palestine for about three years in following Jesus. Now they're being told there is a place where they can be settled. They will wander no more. They will not have to find it. Jesus will take them to it. So they, can get the, so they can, get, can get the point here, but it still needs emphasis. I believe that's why there's a kind of repetition of this promise. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Please have consideration for what Thomas asks. As much as the disciples were making progress, all this continued to be a challenge to their thinking. So he asks, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? He was stuck looking around, not looking up. It is Jesus who elevates his vision. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We are lifted up to a different and eternal way, which brings us to the truth and grants us life. In the 1890s, the Bohemian composer Antonin Dvorak came to this country. Now, he was famous in his native country for taking folk melodies and adapting them for his compositions. He came here to teach at a conservatory in New York. There he met Harry Burley, a black musician who introduced him 
to African-American tunes. The Varshocks spent the summer of 1893 in Spillville, Iowa. This is part of his desire to get to know America better. While there, he composed his most famous work, the New World Symphony. He used a traditional melody for the fourth movement. It's entitled, Going Home. The words are from a spiritual. It's about going home with Jesus. For those in Jesus, for those who have his, him in our hearts, the promise made to Abraham, the promise made by Jesus, is also given to us. He is the one who brings us to the place where the Lord has made preparations for our arrival. That is good news. So I looked up the words. Going home, going home. I'm just going home. Quiet like, slip away. I'll be going home. It's not far, just close by. Jesus is the door. Work all done, laid aside. Fear and grief no more. Friends are there waiting now. He is waiting too. See his smile, see his hand. He will lay, he will lead me through. Brothers and sisters, that is good news. Amen. And now let us sing hymn number 526. living still in spite of dungeon fire heart beat high with joy when they hear that glorious word We will be strong to thee till then. Above our Father, And now go in peace. May God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us this day and forevermore. Amen. with us in the